Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. I want to start things out with some great news concerning the chip shortages. Well, at least in relation to the next generation of products which will be released in 2022. Obviously, that year we'll see the launch of RTX 40, aka Lovelace, RDNA 3, along with a plethora of new processors and other exciting products. But yeah, the last 12 months or so, actually slightly longer than that now, has not been great in tech affecting not only GPUs, but other key things such as automotive parts and, well, next generation consoles has not exactly been easy to get hold of. However, Lisa Su, who is the CEO of AMD, has some great news for us. But first, just a quick word from this video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as home keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. While at the code conference, Lisa Su had mentioned that she does believe that as we move into the Christmas period of this year, well, things are not going to be getting any better. Obviously, the Christmas period at the best of times spurs, well, sales. And as we can probably imagine, with all of the shortages that have been affecting us, it's probably not exactly going to be smooth sailing. But as we move into the second part of next year, so that's 2022 if you're watching this in the far-flung future, chips such as uh, the RDNA 3 series, of course, will definitely benefit from this. But she said that she suspects that we're going to start to see easing of the market. And this is, of course, through numerous reasons, including new fabs coming online. Now, this is not the only one who has said this. There's been numerous analysts, as other, along with other key members of the tech community, who have all said that 2022 is going to be the year that things start to improve considerably, just generally throughout the supply chain. Now, it is worth noting that even SSD prices have started to improve some. <laughs> they did start to really spike, especially when SSD mining was becoming a thing, along with just general other reasons. However, they are starting to normalize, and you can actually get some really good deals on like Gen 4 drives, just letting you guys know, just, you know, just saying. So hopefully this is a good sign going forward. Now, I do believe it's going to be very interesting for people who are kind of debating whether to buy a GPU or not. If, for example, the RTX 30 uh, Super Series, which is going to allegedly launch early next year, is a real thing, but shortages are still plaguing us, I do suspect that many people are just going to skip over it to go with either Lovelace or RDNA 3, whichever your preference is. Oh, yeah, that's also a thing. There's going to be numerous new AMD products which launch next year, and this is according to Grayman. So yes, as we start to see the chip shortage improve in 2022, it doesn't come at any better timing given AMD themselves are going to release a plethora of new hardware throughout those 12 months. Now we do know of course of some of them, either officially or not so officially, such as, for example, we're going to see the RDNA 3 series of GPUs from the company. However, Grayman on Twitter has actually provided some clarification as to what we're going to see AMD launch in that 12 months. So I'm just going to go through these in order. Zen 3D, uh, Zen 3 XT, we'll discuss what that is in just a moment. Zen 3 Plus, which is Rembrandt, a refresh of RDNA 2, but this is for the uh, laptops. Zen 4, and then finally RDNA 3. Now I think everyone at this point knows what the 3D chips are. They are of course the ones with stacked memory, essentially the cache and I suspect that they are going to do quite well against Alder Lake in multi-thread applications. So for example, if you're doing like 3D rendering or maybe video content creation and you can't quite stretch to, you know, a high-end HEDT system such as, you know, the 64-core Threadrippers, although even then video editing doesn't necessarily um, 
translates so well over so many threads quite frequently, like a 32 core can do better, but obviously your mileage may vary there. So it'll be very interesting to see how this plays out. And of course, we do know that Alder Lake is going to be very competitive. We've discussed the benchmarks quite a number of times now on the channel, and Alder Lake is definitely going to do very well. I suspect anyway in gaming from all of the things that I've been hearing. And then Raptor Lake will be following that. But again, Raptor Lake is going to launch next year as well. I'm hearing it's going to be Q3, maybe early Q4, although it's so far out at the moment, release dates can change on a dime. But Raptor Lake is also going to be considerably faster I'm hearing around 12 to 15% IPC, but again, those figures are very early and tentative, so it'll be very interesting to see what Intel can actually squeeze out of it. So naturally, this means that AMD needs to continue to pile on the pressure. And this, of course, brings us to the Zen XT chips, as well as a Zen 4. According to Grayman, when it comes to Zen 3 XT, it, quote, fixes bugs, increases the frequency, and also reduce the, the price of the older Zen 3 chips. And it will launch in the first half of 22, but not a specific time. <laughs> now, this I find quite interesting because obviously with the, you know, stacked, uh, with the Vcash chips, the basically stacked uh, cash, and these chips, I do wonder what AMD's strategy is going to be from a pure marketing standpoint. Now, my personal opinion is that chips such as, for example, the 5600, are prime they're ripe for a price cut now personally and i do understand that this is a very personal take when it comes to pricing i do feel that the 5600 and the 5800 x's were rather expensive i don't think they were necessarily bad chips and given that intel have been not exactly the best when it comes to value for money you almost can't blame amd but yeah that price uh, increase over the previous generations and two base products did hurt some at least from a customer perspective however it will be very interesting to see what amd strategy is i suspect that the um you know 5600s will probably receive quite a price cut just to compete with the lower end older lake SKUs. although of course until we know official pricing for older lake there's been some leaks but again until i see it on store shelves <laughs> or official announcements from Intel, well, you know how that goes. I don't feel I need to really uh, iterate on Zen 4 RDNA 3 too much because we've known about that quite a lot. But when it comes to the laptop side of things, so basically it's going to be a refresh of RDNA 2, but apparently it is only going to be for laptops, probably not the desktops. And this is for the 6900, 68, 67, and finally 6600 mobile. And all of these are using the 6NM process, of course, from TSMC, which is basically 7NM or bit. They've basically just slightly enhanced it. Also, while we are on the subject of Alder Lake, there's an interesting thing that MSI kind of did an oopsie, but not an official you know, confirmation, which has now led to videocards.com and some others in the industry doing some digging. And we now actually have the release date for Alder Lake, which is going to be the 4th of November. So not too long into the distant future, we're going to be able to actually finally get some official answers. Now, I do believe that the reviews are going to go live prior to that. So you're probably going to have like a week or so, I'm guessing, to kind of decide whether you want one and for whole the pre-order process. But long story short, November the 4th is going to be the release date for these chips. And of course, these are going to be on the LGA 1700 socket. So this is kind of how MSI did an oopsie, because although they specifically didn't give a date and said, well, <laughs> Yeah, guys, Alder Lake is releasing this date. What they did do is basically confirm that this is when upgrade kits are going to essentially become available. And, well, yeah, it doesn't really take a genius to kind of start t pulling on the thread there and figure out what actually this could mean. Now, Alder Lake is going to be in a very interesting position, at least in my opinion, because... I suspect that there's going to be a lot of controversy based on how it's benchmarked. And... You know, by this I mean, of course, like some people are going to say it needs to be benchmarked on Windows 10, others are going to say Windows 11, others are going to want Linux and so on and so on. So it'll be very interesting to me to see how different benchmarks and different scenarios kind of affect Alder Lake and also, of course, how many CPU cores of Alder Lake is comparable against what, both in the energy efficient and the, uh, you know, more um, high performance cores I got there in the end. 
yeah, old LA Cullen. I'm actually really looking forward to it. I know I've said this a million times, but I do really want competition in the industry. AMD actually being on top for a few years, I think has been definitely very good for the industry. I think it actually has done wonders for maybe putting Intel in their place. And this was very, very formulative in many ways for some of the best architectures we've seen from Intel. For example, if you remember back in the day, like Pentium 4 got, well, yeah. It, um, it, uh, it was a thing, but obviously AMD were just stomping it with the Athlons at the time, like the Athlon XP series and Athlon 64s, the 64s, and then of course we moved to the X2s. And then basically Intel really hit back hard with uh, chips like the Core 2. And what followed from that, in my opinion anyway, was Intel really just executing rather relentlessly. We had, of course, the core series, and then we started to see architectures such as Sandy Bridge, and yes, I'm skipping over some very important ones. And eventually, of course, we got Skylake, which has basically been omnipresent at this point. But yeah, um, I think that there has been some really good architectures from Intel. I still feel it's very impressive, actually, what you can get in terms of gaming performance out of something like a 2600K if you overclock it far enough. Yeah, um, even a chip like the 6700K, you know, in gaming, it's still okay. It's definitely not, of course, as fast as like a 5950X and it's still pretty decent. So it's actually also fairly impressive too, to be honest with you, how scalable Skylake ended up being. I think towards the end, it was getting a little bit desperate. But, you know, I, I, I genuinely feel that Intel... Um, under, the pre under the pressure of competition really kind of hit back hard. So I'm hoping that if we can get some, you know, tennis going between AMD and Intel, this is only ever going to benefit us as customers. With that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.